I'm doing this uh, special night here. It's been a while since I did a live show. I figured I'd do it with you guys. Well, that's great. I mean, you've been on our show enough, so I thought we could at least, you know, come on yours and give you a little support, brother. Yeah, I know. It's good to hear. Mm -hmm. You got your stream up then? Yep. It's about to... Um, it's about to go. I'm about to start the OBS right now. Okay. All right. I got the uh, thumbnail going right now. So uh, you'll love the thumbnail that I got on there on the screen there pretty soon. Here, you got to look and see. All right. <clears throat> I like out. to put little different things on the thumbnail other than just uh, title and all that stuff. You know, I'll explain later on, you know. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. So you ready, guys? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm ready right. to rock and roll, baby. <laughs> all right all right all right we're now we're we rolling out guys good evening everybody it's dr earl dr earl w brown here and we got with me um minnesota vikings fan and minnesota silver row hunter hey what's up everyone what's and going on what's going on pimpies <laughs> and we got um you know these guys they're the hosts of real as fuck tv which uh streams on vikings fans uh, channel um on YouTube every uh, Thursday night, I guess uh, 6 p.m. Eastern or um, or uh, we Eastern. I mean Central. My bad. Yeah, we changed it. We bumped it up to an hour now. We're gonna start at seven instead of six. Oh, okay. Let's well, see. It, it was a recent change that we just uh, went with. Mm hmm. I see. So, uh, how's things hanging? Everything good? You getting ready for the yeah, New we Year's just, coming we up? Bumped it up to an hour now. We're gonna. Start oh yeah, at everything's eight. great. Everything, right, sweet know. to hear. Good yeah, to hear. we got about what about eight inches of snow on our yeah. driveway right now, but fucking wow, dude. Mini fucking wow. blizzard we've had to deal with since fucking this morning or what last night? Yeah. Wow. Oh, okay. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's something. Yeah, it, it'll be done at like fucking three or four o'clock in the fucking morning. Wow, oh, man. Gosh, that's one of the big reasons why I left Michigan because. Um, you know, basically, uh, Michigan was uh, the last winter I had in Michigan. I think I explained this uh, but a couple of times before. It was like knee deep snow. And at that time, I didn't have a car. I had to uh, get around on a bike because I was struggling that bad. So I had to, I had to really thrust myself up to uh, whichever place I had to go to, whether it was work or a venue or any other place nearby bar on a bike, you know, basically because. <clears throat> And that and that kind of did help me in a lot of ways when it came to cold weather down here in Texas because I'm able to walk around the street even though uh, people are all bundled up. But <laughs> here I am walking around with a light jacket and unbuttoned or unzipped, you know. Some people may question, what the fuck is with, with you, dude? Well, I tell them I'm from Michigan. Oh, that explains it, you know. Yeah, yeah. So are you getting any of that snow that we're getting or – no, the only time we had the only time we ever had snow was actually basically uh, was when well, I hold up there. I got my little thing here, some a little bit of interruption there. Yeah, I heard, I heard something happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's um, that's my bad. Remember uh, the OBS records everything on YouTube. That's how I'm able to do my um, techno dark stream uh, <laughs> stream out there a few times. <laughs> Yeah. No, no, you, I'm just dancing you, you can't the camera. See, you, can't, <laughs> you can't see what Silver Roll's doing in here. Well, what, what's he doing? <laughs> He's like dancing around, dude. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, my God. That's fucking funny. Boogie, oogie, oogie. Boogie, oogie, boogie. Yeah, I just had the mic. I'm trying to adjust it because it sounded sound kind of twangy on his uh, audio, so I was trying to adjust it a little bit. Okay. Mm -hmm. a, you were adjusting the mixer, huh? Yeah, does he sound better now, or is he low, or? Me or Vikings? Uh, Vikings. Me. Oh, okay. Hang on while well, I'm doing something real quick here. All right. Is that any, is Basically, that better? Basically, yeah, so I was talking about the mix. Yeah, I hear you. A lot, a lot more louder now. Okay. All right. Cool, cool. That's what I was saying. I was saying the only time I've ever seen snow here in this area, Texas, was in around uh, December of 2017. Uh, I I was getting up, um, getting something to drink, and getting me some snacks, and getting cigarettes for uh, the sister and brother-in-law. So basically, and, uh, there was a lot. Of, there was not that much snow, but basically, it was a, basically it lasted there for about 
earlier that afternoon and just went away for the rest of the day there. Yeah, yeah, didn't, you guys, didn't you guys get um, snow on the Super Bowl when you guys hosted um, the Super Bowl down in Dallas, Texas? Uh, what year was that? Uh, that was like, I want to say two or three years ago. It was one of the first years that the stadium opened. And then I remember the day of the Super Bowl, um, I swear they were clearing snow. No. Oh, wow. Was it in the Houston area or somewhere Dallas, else? Like the in Dallas. Dallas. Oh, yeah. then most likely it'd probably be in Dallas. So I've never been to Dallas, so I don't really know. Remember, I'm uh, close to the Houston area there. Yeah. 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 How, how far is Houston from Dallas? I don't know. I Like I said, I've never been in Dallas. You know, from what I understand, it's like a four hour drive, I guess it is. You know, have lots of gas money, that's for sure. Right. Hell yeah. Yeah, I've been to Fort Worth, uh, Dallas, Fort Worth, uh, a few times when I used to drive over the road. Yeah, I want to. What you know? One of the things I want to do that's on my bucket list is ba- is visit, go to Arlington, Texas. You know, and visit the grave site of both Dimebag and Vinnie Paul Abbott. You know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was fucked up shit that happened to Dimebag Daryl, man. Yeah. That yeah, was I fucking that. crazy, dude. Somebody walked yeah. up on stage and whacked him. Yeah, shot him dead because uh, they said apparently he, they thought he broke up Pantera. First of all, Pantera was never broken up. It was just taking hiatus when they were doing their, when uh, Daryl and Vinny were doing their project, Damage Plan at that time. But somebody, uh, but this asshole was basically one of those super obsessive people who get upset over the littlest of things, you know. Fuck that shit. You know. Yeah. Well, either him. way, he's dead. Either way, so he was just shot outside by an off-duty uh, security guard or police officer, I guess. The guy that shot killed Dimebag. No, uh, but yeah, the guy. Yeah, that idiot. He got shot by um, as I mentioned. Yeah. So. So he got, know, he, he got his justice. Yep. Basically, right then and there, you mm. know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, we live in a fucking crazy society these days, man. We live I know. in a crazy fucking world, dude. I I never heard of fucking people getting killed on stage, you know, performing like that, man. I know. It's just like, you know, and the thing is, you know, the, I, the mentality of some of these people, though, which we got to get into, you know, the mentality of people thinking that um, over obsessive over something that... Um, that ain't really uh, much of their concern, you know. Basically, you know, fuck. I'm like, fuck this, you know. <laughs> so do pe- do people have to take things that extreme? Yeah, so serious all the time and shit. I mean, I know it's just crazy, crazy, you know, crazy, I, crazy. Mm-hmm. Which was, was you watching Ken's program last Saturday night when me, Alex Payne, and Ray Lounge, Ray Lounge was on um, with Ken there on his show. Yeah, I was. we were talking. Yeah, oh yeah, we were. Yeah, I remember. I saw you in the chat. I was going to say I should probably call in, but I think um, Ken decided to end the show. You know. Yeah, you know. I, I tried calling in a, right at the end. I, it, you know, I should have called in sooner, but I didn't. Ah, um, uh, okay. But the thing, the thing about it was, was like Ken was going to end it, and then all of a sudden he he kept it going, and I was like, you know, I, I was confused a little bit. Yeah, but you know? basically, you know, sometimes things can show up at the last minute where it's a uh, last minute detail, last minute stories, you know, last minute um, news items that the one that someone brings up, you know, like I did with that uh, one particular ugly sweater with the sa- with Santa starting blowing his nose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fuck yeah. Yeah, I know. I saw I saw that on Facebook and I uh, clipped it. I figure I sent it to Ken, you know, to to talk about it. Was like what the fuck you know yeah shit i mean if someone did that themselves i mean it, w- it would have took a while to you know knit a sweater like that you know <laughs> imagine the public rock cry when it was sold right in the stores because basically this was sold online from what i take it oh damn <laughs> what's that straw mommy what's that what, why is santa holding a straw and there's a Big pile of snow in front of them. <laughs> big pile of coke with a straw. It's pretty fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> of course we get. <clears throat> excuse me. Of course we get the reference to because y'all. <coughs> excuse me, there. <coughs> Don't die on yeah. us, Earl. I won't. I just had to get a cough out. 
<laughs> basically the idea that you know they often compare cocaine as they often call cocaine snow at times so basically they already got the idea from you know mm-hmm. that's been for years they did that for ages you know right some blows some snow uh-huh. <laughs> no, no, no show no blow no show no no show bro <laughs> yeah mm-hmm. uh, so um <laughs> also let's Speak of the blow, some blow. We know our favorite blowhard is finally doing something good for once in a in his life for a while. Who? Tommy. Oh, Mr. Tommy. Oh. So, yeah. Oh, hang on, hang on. I, I was going to say something since you mentioned Tommy. Mm-hmm, yeah. There's some rumors that Thursday night, Real as mm-hmm. Fuck TV might have a special guest on, and and, um, and um, um, his name is Bill Fenton. Tommy's dad. Bill. Oh, Tommy's really? Tommy's dad oh. might show up on Real as Fuck TV Thursday night. Just, All right, just, just a, a sneak just, peek. Just a sneak inside. Tommy's mine. It, nah, and his dad might fucking call in. We'll see if he makes it on. We'll see if Bill Fitton can make it on Thursday night. But All right, so uh, how are you able to get a hold of him? Uh, you know, I, I got my, my means, you know. <laughs> It's it's you right. know I I, th- I was talking to him texting him earlier tonight and earlier this morning and we were talking and he's like I'm gonna I'm gonna try to call in for sure Thursday night so mm. as, as long as he you know keeps his word we should have Tommy's dad Bill Fitton on Thursday night. All right, good. I'll be listening. I'll be listening. <laughs> you could probably you could probably ask him, oh, where the fuck is he get these ideas that he's above everybody else? I don't need to take advice. I don't need to apologize. That makes you look like a bitch. You could have, probably uh, ask him where he got those ideas from. Tommy did, you know. Yeah, it, as long as he makes it to the show, it's going to be very fucking interesting because I got a lot of questions for Bill. Oh, I got a lot of questions for James Woolery. He oh, asked me man, that. that motherfucker. Yeah, he he con he basically commented. You remember the video I did on him on the situation on between him and Tommy, you know, the beef they had on Ken's program a couple of times before Hurricane Dorian hit in Florida, where James Woolery lives. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he basically uh, said, said uh, somebody like, sent me a message on Twitter saying follow him back and DM him. You know, basically, so I did. I tried to contact him to get all get the load down from him about Tommy, about those uh, gay um, porn, you know, channels that was in this Tommy's playlist on his <laughs> channel there. Yeah, I remember that shit, dude. The oh, gay man. porn shit, dude. Yeah. Came out say it came out the same time Balloon Gate started, basically. Yeah. And I also wanted to ask James Woolley about Tommy's, why does he have this consistent need of attention? Because that's the way Tommy fucking functions. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out where that came from. Did he get too much attention as a kid? He's grown accustomed to it? Or did he not get any attention from anybody? That's that's what he's desperately seeking. You know, come on, Tommy. If you want attention, get it the right way. Earn it. I, I kind of believe he didn't get enough attention, and he, that's why he acts out the way he acts out. Yeah, mm-hmm. but the thing is, you know, the thing is, there's a good thing. If you want to seek attention, get the right kind of attention. Get the good attention, you know, the respectful attention, you know. Do something respectful. Do something good, you know. We have yet to see Tommy do that, <laughs> other than this uh, working yeah. out that he's doing. I like Tommy. Yeah. You heard about that? Uh, Tommy's finally uh, going to the gym and working out. Yeah, I heard he's trying to drop a couple pounds. His brother's working him out, I heard. He's losing yeah, some baloney you know, around the way. That's one good thing because you <laughs> ever see him in, in that green suit on the Joe's program that one time? Hell yeah. Yeah? Yeah, he looked oh, like God. a leprechaun. <laughs> yeah, he looked like a green booger coming out of someone's nose. <laughs> oh. Greenie. The greenie. Big green. Yeah, big greenie. <laughs> <laughs> and the, all things, he dances the nickelback. Hell yeah. <laughs> and the, now here's the thing Tommy also needs to upgrade his musical choices because, you know, he listens to Nickelback, Lady Gaga, and Madonna. It's like, Tommy, Nickelback is not rock and roll to me. <laughs> like a virgin. 
<laughs> Touch for the very first time. Oh, like a virgin. This is some fucking me. Judas Priest, dude. Uh, Judas Priest will get you laid. <laughs> Tommy don't know who the fuck Judas Priest is. Come on, Brown. Yeah, but so well he needs to learn. That's what I'm. That's what I'm here for. But sadly, he won't. He hates my guts because I'm considered competition for him. Hell yeah. Well, well you actually make people with autism look good, and Tommy yeah. makes people with autism look fucking stupid. Yeah. You, you know <laughs> what you I want? mean? Exactly. Fucking, you know. it's crazy. I mean, man. many people. A couple. There was this one uh, program on. Mon there was one moment on monetize this. Some um, one episode where. Some guy with autism talked about how they, they bust his ass, they work their asses off, but yet Tommy comes out there of the, acting all entitled and shit, you know? And Joe Cronin even said, you know, I brought that up a couple of times in the past, you know? Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I, uh, you know, I, I, I'm not really too much into monetize this no more, so. I know, yeah, so you kind of like drifted away from the JCS around my heart. Yeah, I I had to do what I had to do. Was it because of uh, him having Scott on this program? Uh, it, it was many things, but I felt one of the biggest things was that... The wheel. <laughs> the wheel, oh well, yeah. Well, okay, <laughs> see, I, I'm going to say it's 50. Here, here's the first part of really what pissed me off. Since we're gonna, since you brought it up, I guess we'll get into it a little bit. Um, yes. That he made seven hundred and fifty fucking dollars off of fucking that wheel, off of burning wow. me. You know what I'm wow. saying? Yeah. So, I felt like the right thing to do would maybe have kicked me a couple hundred bucks. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, you make that kind of money, you you fucking get me rolled out of there for two years. Kick a guy a couple hundred bucks. Show some gratitude. You know what I'm saying? Yes. I mean, if I'm I'm such a loyal I've been such a loyal Patreon, and, and you want to hug me and all this shit and da da da, fucking you know, where's your sense of fucking right and wrong? I I just like think like somebody like that is real fucking greedy, if you wow. ask me, and and that's fucked. You know what I'm saying? I, I was a Patreon for over two fucking years. I, I I did a lot. I fucking... We all know I probably called in like a hundred fucking times or something like that. I lost track. You know what I mean? Yes, I remember. You know, I, 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 I was a... I feel like I was a pretty big... Ended up being a pretty big part of Monetize This. You know what I mean? And yes. That, and now he lost that. You know what I mean? Wow. That shit's over. Wow. I, I don't care about... The, being banned, I don't, I don't give a shit. I don't mm -hmm. want to. I don't want to fucking have nothing to do with the guy. Wow. You know what I'm saying? And here's the second part. Hey, I got some. I lost the love and feeling. <laughs> Whoa, that love and feeling. Yeah. I lost that love and feeling yeah, going down. That's down, true. True. Down. True. Down. I'm sorry about that. No, that's true, true, true. I just, it sounded like that, man. I lost the love and feeling, baby. And, and I feel like the second part was all he did was do damage to real as fuck TV. Oh, wow. I, I, I feel like he fucking did nothing but want to try to keep us down and keep us down. And fucking after a while, it just fucking wore on me. And just talking shit all the time about us. Yeah, and, you know, just exactly. kind of running us in the dirt. You know? Exactly. And... And I just had had enough. I mean, the guy can apologize all he wants, but the proof is in your actions. And his actions fucking are what they are. They're trash. You know? If, if you feel, wow. you know, he, I, I, I was under the delusion that I thought he was my friend, and he never was. He was an, asso wow. he was an associate. You know what I'm wow. saying? There's a, and, and that's part, partly my fault for being naive, I guess. You uh -huh. know what I mean? So, it was a learning experience. Shit happens, you know. Life goes on, you know. We we got fucking our one year anniversary coming up of Real as Fuck TV, January 9th. That'll be our one year nice. show, you know. Nice, yeah. Fucking, glad to hear that. You know, we've been we've been doing this damn thing for a year, and me and Silverwell, we're gonna do this thing till we got a fucking heartbeat. 
You know what I mean? As long as you got a heartbeat, this shit ain't going to stop. Even if I have to wheel you up to the mic. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Even if I'm crippled and all I'm in a fucking stuck in a wheelchair, fucking silver roll, wheel me into the Legends Lounge and away we go. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it. Yeah. You know? Woo, yeah. We, we love coming on and then trying to entertain people and have fun. I mean, what the fuck? That's what this has all, always been about. It ain't been about anything else. You know? There, uh-huh. there, ain't, there ain't a fucking false narrative or whatever the fuck you want to call it it you know it it is what it is me and silver we love doing this shit and we you know we love having people like you dr brown who fucking Mm -hmm. support us you know that means that means that that means a fucking hell yeah those it means more than you could imagine dr brown you know i appreciate it because because we don't have a ton of support let's be honest you know, I, I, I'm gonna, I'm keeping it real as fuck right now. We we got a little bit of support, and 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 we appreciate every bit of it. You know. Mm-hmm. I do. I appreciate. Uh, I appreciate your acknowledgement. I try to, uh, you know, reach out to other YouTubers as well. And there was um, a couple of times. You know, I was also looking into uh, the, you know, getting involved with other YouTubers outside, like uh, say the Carrie Show and the Keemstar. You know. I would like to know when uh, Keemstar doing his, does his live stream, so I can call in and say hi if he does have he has his if uh, he has his program set up like that. I'm gonna be honest; it's almost next to impossible to get to talk to Keemstar. All right, because he, he's he, that huge. He thinks he's above it, you know. Oh, you know Ooh. what I'm saying? He thinks he's above everybody. Like, oh, he has. He has friends like only use me blade and that only use me blades got like six hundred thousand subs, you know what I'm saying? So so Keemstar mm-hmm. looks down on everybody pretty much unless you're uh-huh. unless you're somebody big, you know. Then then you get his attention if you're making waves on YouTube or whatever. Then it's a different story. Then 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 he'll start doing uh, drama alert, you know, and then you'll oh, be yeah. in the drama alert and he'll talk about you, you know. Uh-huh. But it's Keemstar is a weird motherfucker, man. I mean, he goes way back, though. You know, I don't know if you know anything. Probably don't. But about Battle Cam, you ever heard of Battle Cam? Battle Cam. I don't think I have. No. He used to be called DJ Keemstar way back in the day. That's what he was originally came out as. And you know. He 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 was he made his way through there, through fucking, through that, through the battle cam, and, and that's where he originated from. There's a uh. there, there's a lot of guys that are on YouTube that fucking came from battle cam, actually, mm-hmm. like Shoe Nice. Yeah, Shoe so I Ni- heard about him. Shoe Nice was another guy that came from battle cam too. I don't know um, if you've ever heard of Billy the Fridge. I, I heard of his name a couple of times there. Yeah, another YouTuber, I take it. Mm-hmm. But there are you. He's there a rapper. YouTubers. He's a rapper too. He ha- he has. All right. He actually has. Mu- Billy the Fridge actually has music on Pandora. Ah. He's so you know he's um. He's 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 done something you know but and he's another guy too like like I said he came from Battle Cam a lot of a lot of these people man they've been around the internet for a while they're not new. They might be new to YouTube or whatever, but they've been going at it for a long time. You know what I mean? Uh, mm-hmm. I mean, Battle Cam, all that really was was like, they call it the main. Mm-hmm, yes. And you go on the main, and you basically, you just battle somebody. You know, you talk as much shit as you fucking can, and then they vote, and they give you points. And then whoever mm-hmm. wins it is the winner on that main. You stay on the main, and then you go and you battle the next person. And, mm-hmm. you, and you just keep trying to go, and that's how battle cam kind of works. Oh, wow. so basically you battle out virtually like a rap battle, which is without the beats and rhymes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you can go on, you talk all the mad shit you want, you know, and do what you want. It's um, it's back up and running. Trump set shut them down, but now uh, battle cam's up. I mean, I got a battle cam account, oh. but I haven't went on the main yet and battled or anything like that. But I've mentioned this shit to Silver Roll that I'd like to do it sometime. Mm-hmm. Yep. 
Yeah, um, we talked about it a few times. The thing about it is, is there's this. I don't know if you've ever heard of Alki David. Is that name? Uh, no, I'm sorry, I haven't. No. Well, he's the founder of Battle Cam, and he's a fucking sick fuck, dude. Wow. He, he. This is how this guy was. He was married and had a kid with a hot ass chick, right, Alki David? Uh huh. Yes. And then a couple of years later, he's laying in bed with some dude. He fucking flipped and fucking went the other way, man. He's he's a sick fucker, dude. You don't want to know that guy. I'm going to tell you that. That stay the fuck away from Alky fucking David, dude. <laughs> <laughs> most, uh, most, likely pro- most likely I'll probably forget his damn name at the end of this broadcast here. Yeah, well, yeah I know I'm bad with names, too. Un- unfortunately, I've researched a lot of that shit, too. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. Yeah. So, so that's how I found a lot of these people that are on YouTube that came from Battle Cam. You know? Uh-huh. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, just just giving you some insight. Like like I said, like DJ Keemstar, that's what he originally was. Mm-hmm. You know, you ever heard him, that clip where he's saying the N-word? No, I haven't, no. Yeah, well, he got swatted. When he was on Battle Cab. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, sure, 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 sure. And, and he was, then he's, there's a clip of him saying the N word about five or six times. Oh, damn. And he, uh, did he get uh, taken down from YouTube for using that word? Nah, nah, the video's still up there of it. Oh, wow. But that, ori- that originated from Battle Cab. That's when that happened, and it got, you know, uploaded onto YouTube. I so, see. So this is probably before I joined YouTube because. I didn't start to didn't become a YouTube personality until about 2017 with the um, introduction to Five Mouths Network, Super Ugly Show, and then later on Joe Cronin and everybody else. You know. Mm. Mm. Well, so with, so basically, I've been in this uh, thing for about three years exactly, basically. So you're you're still kind of pretty new. Yeah, in the time years wise, I'm pretty. I mean, I know I know Corona has said like I'm kind of like I've been here for a long time. You know, basically as Mars Mira actually said it as well when I called in on his show. When actually when his show streamed with your show, when I was on, we were discussing um, the audio clip of Scott chewing out Bex that one time. Oh, well, you know what? I still have them. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I still, even though that episode got lost, I still have them clips. So. Yeah, they, they haven't gone anywhere. Yeah, that was episode forty-two, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Any word on that? How that's coming along? Did uh, the boys at YouTube finally um, started to uh, hear your case on that? You know what? I I went down the proper route through the YouTube policy shit with the mm-hmm. right people. Yes. And I'm still in the middle of fucking battling with it. Wow. And and you know. I'm trying. I'm not letting it go. I'm gonna keep fighting it. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm gonna. I'm trying to get that episode back because fucking it was bullshit. It was I fair. Know. It was fair content. You know what I mean? Yeah. What it was? Yeah. It was a basic. You know, and it had a purpose. I mean, like mm-hmm. here was Scott. Here was uh, Cake Cake Boy. You know, going after one of his supporters all over the phone. You know, just for talking to you. You know. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah it's yeah. like the clip. But the clip, by the way, was later. Um, was a uh, redub actually basically it was made more listenable because you recorded it off the phone and you played it on the mic i guess right yeah yeah but i had i had it playing through my speaker yeah <laughs> and by the way folks it's on the mars mirror channel you know basically oh, it's very no. upset yeah it's on it's very <laughs> good, very good. <laughs> <laughs> it's very, but it is upsetting to listen to when you think about it because that shows the characteristics of the beast of son of a bitch, you know. Yeah, yeah, you know, we had a little internet issue last week, so we couldn't do a show. Ah, uh, and uh, I had some serious shit planned for the drama club over there. Ah, uh, I and, see. And that shit's still gonna go on, so it, it, I haven't changed my mind about how I fucking feel and what I plan on doing, so. Right. Towards <laughs> Drama Club and Mars and all those guys. Man, dude, them motherfucking flip floppers, dude. They make me sick to my stomach, dude. Fucking, you know, and, you know, who know? My opinion is, I give it a month or two, and some shit's gonna happen over there 
and they're going to start eating each other up like they have in the past. Oh, wow. And then the next thing you know, Mars Mirror will disappear for a while. He'll delete his channel like he has in the past. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? He's proven... He's already proven that when the heat's when the fire's too hot for him, he go he tucks his tail and he runs. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yes, I know. Yeah, I know. I I was gonna say this, you know. <coughs> excuse me. I mentioned all the times, you know, Scott and YR called me many times, asking me, you know, they'll be a part of that program a couple times, you know. I admit, I was almost tempted to call in on that show one time, one Sunday night, but I decided not to because, you know. You know, because, you know, you know, Scott's been pretty mad at me because of the statements I made about, yo, uh, Gret choking the shit out of YR, you know. Well, by, but by the way, I believe is behind a couple of fake-ass accounts with my name in it. Oh, a couple? Uh, I bet you he's behind about ten fucking fake-ass accounts with your name you behind know, here's, it. Yeah, but, so, see, see, what you, see what you think of this. There are two. There are two accounts that one of them was on uh, Mars's show last night. One's called Doctor Earl's Infected Foot. Yeah, I saw that other, one. I saw that yeah. fucking account one. They were they were talking about can you help? Can you fix my foot or something like that? My foot. That was probably YR. It's definitely YR. And then also YR, you have under this uh, another account name called T Doctor Doctor Brown's AR15. T Tiki of Doom was asking if, if I'm a liberal. <laughs> what the fuck, man? Man, I, dude, I, I'm a free-thinking person, you know what I mean? And I'll speak You're independent. By, yeah. You're independent, yes. Yeah, fuck yeah, man. I, I'm, I'm whatever. Fucking Same I, here, man. I, I'm not in no fucking category. Fuck that shit. You're in the mongoloid category, yeah, baby. Mongoloid, remember? I'm a mongoloid. I'm a mongoloid, motherfucker. Yo, I'm thinking about the Devo song right now, that particular title. What? I know a whip it. Whip it good. Yeah, but no, no, this is a song called Mongoloid by Devo. It's from their first uh, record from 1978. I, I, I never heard oh, that Oh, really? Song. Oh, wow. I, I, didn't I, know that. It, I didn't know that. Yeah, you know, type it on YouTube. They should have different versions of it, that studio and live versions of it. You know, that's when that word started getting used. I believe it was Cunny Chris who started using it on you that one time. That's the first thing that came to my mind was that <laughs> song. I never knew that Devo did that. Never yeah, did. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Remember the album "Are We Not Men? Are We We Are Devo?" Yeah, the one with Jocko Home on it. "Are We Not Men? We Are Devo." Th that's, that's the one. What, that's the that's one where they're wearing the weird fucking hats on it, right? Well, that was before. This is before they were wearing those flower pots okay. or energy domes, as they call it. Okay. You no, know, they, they didn't start that till 1980. Okay. The flower pots. That that's when that song became "Whip It" came out. You okay. know, "Whip It" real good. I gotcha. Yeah. All right. So, so what do you think? When you walk into um, I know it. I know it. Excuse me. So I always wanted to ask. Well, let me go back my thoughts. So, what are your thoughts on this one YouTuber that I did a couple videos on, and along with everybody else on this guy, Onision? He he's a jackass, man. I've never heard of him. He that mother. <laughs> he, he's sitting there. Yeah. Bitch, he's sitting there bitching about how oh, oh I had to sell one of my cars and I I got to sell one of my houses. Like come mm -hmm. on, fuck you, dude. Really? It's really oh you, you got fucking cars and two houses and shit. Oh boy, oh boy, you gotta fucking sell one. How can you fucking feel bad for the dude? He still got a nice car. He still got a house. You know what I'm saying? I look at all the charts, all the stuff I've been hearing about him with him uh, grooming young uh, underage girls and stuff like that. Oh well, you know I'm gonna tell you this much. That's that's old news to me. I know what he's he's had a, his girlfriend on there, and I think he met her when she was underage. Yeah, you know Shiloh, what I'm saying? That's a, yeah, yeah, Shiloh from Canada. Yeah, because I'm finding I I just found out about all this a couple of months back. I was like, holy shit! Me and my ex girlfriend used to watch him on YouTube when she lived in Lincoln Park, Michigan, many times. You know, I would come and visit her when when I had the or chance or you know, when the weekend you know let me if I wasn't working at my job when I was living in the area that I was living in. And we would watch him. We would watch Shane Dawson's earlier work. You know. We'll mm -hmm. love that, you know. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And then all of a sudden, now we kind of fell out of it. And then, surprised he was still making videos. And I find out all this shit coming up. But the thing that gets me buzzed is the fact that he's portraying like he's um he's living in a tent. He's living in this car. He's a homeless. He's staying in a motel. He's staying yeah. at this place. But here's the thing: if he's living in the, all those places, how is he able to charge his phone to keep keep making these dumb videos of him breaking <laughs> down and losing his shit? Yeah, it's, it's a fucking <laughs> act. Exactly, to gain sympathy and sorry, homie, it's not working. It's not working. Well, you know, all the, there's I'm sure there's a lot of trolls that are fucking probably heavily attacking Onision right now. Oh yeah, right now you look at it. I have I've checked his YouTube page and his Facebook page, and all the comments regarding those um, all those um, subjects are just outstanding, outstanding. In twenty of his videos, the comments are turned off, you know, because he knows the kind of flack he's gonna get, you know. Yeah, yeah, and he deserves every bit of it. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. <sighs> Basically, I'm kind of pissed off at him and myself because, you know, come on, you're like, with all the actions he's done, you know, regarding, you know, he had his wife, your first wife used to be part of his videos. Then he divorces her to yep. take up with this underage girl from yep. Canada, yep. a singer from Canada, that is. And then all of a sudden, there was this one clip of her um, having this mental breakdown in a um, bot on the shower floor. But instead of helping his love, he videotapes it and then uploads it. Yeah. What kind of a low life is that? Yeah, and like I said, that's not, he's, there's been multiple underage girls at his house on stream. Yeah. You know what I mean? And he's it's, it's, it's supposed to be involved with this uh, person named Kai who was a uh, female to male transgender. I was like, what the fuck, you know? Well, of course, he did say he's bisexual, along with Shane Dawson, but what the fuck, you know? The crazy shit they were doing, I later heard out about. I mean, you watch uh, Chris Hansen's YouTube channel, they've been, they've been on his ass, so... As of late, on these seance, that is, they've been talking to all the people who have been involved with him, the, some of his victims, Shiloh included, including this other lady whose name I cannot pronounce. So it's like, holy shit, this guy's a son of a bitch. So, so Chris Hansen's, Onision's caught in Chris Hansen's radar, huh? Yes, he has. Yeah, he's. Wow. When you know, everybody, everybody knows that when you're investigated by Mister Chris Hansen, you're himself. You know you're in big trouble. Yeah, I know that. Um, Blade. Yeah, only use me, Blade. He went on Chris Hansen's show, and ex and explained everything. Tried Ooh, to anyway. No, no, no. You no. want? You want? No, 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 no. no, no. Only use oh, me, yeah. Blade. Oh. Only use me, Blade. Oh. He oh, went okay. on Chris Hansen's show, and was trying to explain himself. But the problem was, there's this video. Of, of him in the back of this RV and he's humping something and there's this chick back there and I uh, fucking I can't remember her name right now and mm -hmm. and she supposedly said that you goat know, cheese or yeah, something goat cheese that's it and she said you know that blade raped her you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying wow. wow so she um ends up going to the Colorado I, I can't remember what police station in Colorado and she goes and she ends up filing rape charges or whatever on him. But it's like she waits like four days to go and do it. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So then, you know, Chris Hansen picks up on it and is like, you know, explain this, explain this. And he's like, no, that's not what was going on at all. It was just a joke. I had my clothes on the whole time. Mm -hmm. That's what Blade tried to say, you know. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so I'm not sure how that case has turned out. What's the ending on it yet? I don't know, you know. But yeah, Chris Hansen picked up on that. And then another thing too with Chris Hansen, mm -hmm. yes, was Ice Poseidon was over in Europe, okay. Mm -hmm. And Ice Poseidon and Chris Hansen they had set up a meeting to meet with each other. Well, Ice Poseidon ended up dusting them, you know. Um, said fuck you basically and ended up not showing up to meet chris hansen so oh, really so chris hansen you know he wanted to talk to ice poseidon about some shit too mm -hmm. 
What about some of his shit he's done? Or? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like you want to do investigate him and shit, you know, like on some uh, on some underage shit, I guess, you know, supposedly. Oh, really? See, it, it just seemed like he was just, he was on some bullshit because. After the CX and that work. Yeah. I mean, Ice Poseidon, you know, he fucking moved, moved off. Moved out. He's actually in Texas where you are. Oh, really? Which part? Oh, fucking Austin. Oh, well, I'm not, I don't live that area, near that area, so I'm safe there. <laughs> You're safe. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he's still, he goes out and he's still doing IRL, you know, he's out doing live streams, but he's doing desktop streams too. Oh, uh, I see. You know, and plus he's streaming over on fucking Mixer now. Ah. Which sucks. Fuck Mixer. I don't like Mixer. I'm not a mm. fan of it. I don't know if you ever heard of it or not. Uh, no, I haven't, really. Yeah, it's... I don't know, dude. Mixer seems like it's like more of an app for fucking gaming shit. More, you know? Like, gamers love that shit. Mm. You know? It's like... But that's what Twitch is for. I see. You know? <laughs> you know I haven't been on Twitch in a long, long while there. When you come to think of it, I would try to get on there, but I have to re have to probably have to go through a new password and all that bullshit, and just want to go through that again. Yeah, I don't, I don't fuck with Twitch too much. No, not, not. It's not really, you know. Basically, YouTube is the biggest spot where I'm at. You know, every so often I go on Twitter. That's mostly it. You know what I mean? Like yes. Mm -hmm. I, I stay away from a lot of the fucking shit. You know, I haven't been on Facebook in fuck fifteen years almost. Wow. So I yeah I uh, fuck that you know I I I fucking quit Facebook basically mm. and, and I'll never go back. Yeah, it's right now. It's not a good time to be on Facebook because uh, so many people are divided and politically wise. Basically, it's like basically if you're uh, if you're against uh, a political party that they're supporting, you're considered the number one enemy in their lives. You know, but then again, I believe that's how people um, of this generation are taught to believe. You know, right? Mm -hmm. Fuck yeah. Yeah, a lot of a lot of people. A lot of here's the thing. I pointed this out to um, uh, Joe Cronin. I pointed this out to Ken. You know, basically, a lot of the people who now work YouTube, Google, you know, uh, Twitter, and stuff like that are the, probably the same pig kids who grew up in the 1990s. You know, believing that liberalism is the way to go, accept people for the regardless of their sexual orientation or their ethnic background. You know, and anybody else who. Um, questions all that is considered the enemy you know basically and we all know how liberal the 1990 what 1990s were all together you know basically it's all about other brace and other religions you know brace and everything except god and his word and stuff like that it's also basically about you know looking down on conservatism that's what the people from that generation who moved on to this generation still believe to this very day that's what they were putting into their heads right Right, fuck yeah. Yeah, yeah. This, this, it's a wild fucking world that we're living in, man. Well, yeah, I think kids nowadays, they you know, the parents are fucking scared to punish them, so they get away with all this shit and fucking it's yeah, exactly. you know, mutating them. Not, yeah, I think these dumb shrinks out there are coming up with these theories that if you hit a kid, they'll be traumatized for life, they'll become serial killers. No, no. The reason they were hit is because they did something extremely bad, and a whooping was uh, basically the only way to teach them a lesson. Well, yeah, it's like, I mean, fuck, I got my ass whipped quite a few times, you know. So did I. So did I. All three of us did, you know. Yeah, a lot, a lot of the times, so did I. And basically, a lot of dumb shit I did, I deserved it for because <laughs> some of the right. dumb shit I did. Yeah. Right, yeah, we were all in the same boat on that. Yeah. You know, kids are kids. You, you know, know basically, I mean? it wasn't like, you know, nowadays, if a kid puts their hand on the grill grill on the some on the stove or something like that and most of the parents be like oh come here poor baby our parents were like you know bet you won't do that shit again won't you right you know it's, it's funny that you talk about that because with adrian peterson 
Mm-hmm. You know, remember he he beat his kid twice with a fucking stick. You know what I mean? A switch. Really? A switch. Yeah. 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 Oh. Yeah. yeah. He didn't learn. He, you know, it wasn't. He took a lot of fucking heat the first time he did it. Wow. And then he ended up doing it again. You know what I mean? And it's like, he's Peterson is old school. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, that's what he learned as a kid. So he was applying that same kind of discipline to his kid. And I'll bet you mm-hmm. we don't we hear we they go after this guy, but we don't know the out uh, the situation with the kid. He probably was doing some crazy shit that probably <clears throat> earned him that ass whooping. I'm wondering how many of these kids that fucking go and kill people in the schools and shit. How many of them actually got their asses spanked? I bet you none of them did. Yeah, I attempt to agree with that. Because they end up killing themselves afterwards. Because it's like the whole thing is, um, when I was in school, they didn't have fucking that shit going on back in the fucking 80s and 90s and shit, you know? Because I graduated in 91. Yeah, I graduated in 85, basically. Yeah. I think what it is is that so many... Here's my theory on that subject, you know? Since uh, this past year was the 20th anniversary of the uh, Columbine shootings in uh, Littleton, Colorado, Columbine High School, what I'm speaking of, I think what it is is that a lot of the kids out there who are being bullied see no other option because in the back of their mind, they want to get rid of this situation now. They want to take care of this now because don't wait till later because it's going to, because in their minds, they're thinking it's going to continue, it's going to go on and on and on and on. And basically, they have it in their heads that they must get even. They must make the world pay. They want to make everybody else suffer, you know. Basically, it's their way of sending a message saying, don't fuck with me no more or this will be the outcome. But when they got time that they complete that task, they realize what they've done and they realize they're going to get their asses tossed behind behind, behind Bahars for life. They're going to get raped in the showers, fucked in the ass, and they're by their cellmates. So they have no, and they're going to be looked down by their friends. You'll probably find like those chains, boy. So they have no choice but to end their, to kill themselves in the end. Hell know? yeah, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Rather than spend the rest of their lives in behind bars. Who wants that? Yeah, and but I mean, it's like, you know, fucking bullying has been going on since fucking schools began. You yeah, know, I mean, like me uh, and you, you graduated 85, I graduated 91. We didn't see you know, people that were getting bullied and going out and killing fucking 50 people out of school. I know. You know, what, what the hell did. changed? You know, what changed that? I, that's what fucks my head up. It's like, you know, all of a sudden it just started rolling. Like some kind of like fucking mental thing went on or something. I know. I guess uh, some people got to the point, some kids, you know, got to the point where they just couldn't handle it no more and didn't see no other option. Just to pick up a gun and start shooting, blasting people's heads off you well know? shit when i was a kid my dad had fucking five rifles fucking right you know hanging on the wall i mean you know i never thought once of taking a gun i mean i got picked on a lot i i used my fists and i fought back you know what i mean yeah that's what kids need to start using need to fight back you know that's why i kept telling erotic kitty which you'll get into later on fight back with your fists or better yet, with your words like saying like say take for example Fill the mouth Gaber tells me to go fuck your mother. I said I would say something like, uh, can I fuck yours instead? I heard her pussy's a lot more tighter and wetter. I heard she can suck a golf ball through a garden hose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something, yeah, yeah, something like that. Fight back with your fists and with your uh, words. You know, that's the better way to option. That's our PSA for the moment for today, kids. You know. Only use the gun when you absolutely need to do it. Use it for protection only. That's gun control right there, folks. Well, yeah, I just, I mean, I, I, I've been thinking about that for years. Like, why, why all of a sudden you have all these mass murders, you know, in the schools? And it never happened, I mean, f- for like, like 70, 100 years before that. I mean, shit, people had rifles hanging on their walls all over the country. Because these liberal activists, you know, they got this, I think they got the idea that they probably grew up in some area, like some uh, ghetto area where they see a lot of gunfire going off. I know, I know Senator Diane Frankenstein, as I call her, because that's what she fucking looks like, you know, she basically, yeah, Diane Feinstein or Frankenstein, as I mentioned 
as I call her. She said that she had some sort of some testimony that um, she grew up in an area where there was lots of gunfire. She grew up seeing people get shot in this, you know, and when you grow up in that, seeing that a lot of times, that's going to affect, that's going to fuck your head up, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, for instance, another example, Batman. Yeah, it's like when Bruce Wayne was a little kid, he saw his parents get shot by a gun. That's why we use, we have yet to see him use any gun, let alone a rifle or a bolt or a cannon or something like that, you know? There was one moment in the comics that I saw on Facebook of him going after some guy. It's, Don't you ever point a gun at me ever again! So most likely Batman himself is probably um, not for gunplay, basically. Because of what happens, what he saw as... As a little kid, I mean, when you see uh, your parents get killed at that age, it's uh, that's gonna really fuck your head up, you know, basically. Mm-hmm. Fuck yeah, it would. Of course yeah, it basically. Would. Yeah. So basically, what it is is that they got the idea that you know, you know, got, coming from what they see, and all the people getting killed, all the drive-bys, you know, from the early '90s, all the, you know, these rappers talked about during that early, during that gangster rap era. You know, hearing all the stories that go on in Compton, California, or in the inner cities like Chicago, Detroit, you know, yeah. L.A., stuff like that, or yeah. New York City, you know, they probably it's going to affect their heads, and that's where they got the idea for a uh, gun, gun control. But they're here to the point, you know, gun. If you're going to take away all the guns, it's going to use other methods to kill people, whether it's knives, machetes, you know, tire irons, billy clubs, baseball you know. bats, fuck. Yep. A lot, a lot of, a lot of guns and drivers. A lot of guns and gangs in uh, Salt Lake City too. Exactly. That's another big city. Of Fucking mine, butter sure. knife. <laughs> I mean, butter you can knife. use drivers. a pencil. You can Fuck. Use a jab that into someone's back real hard, and that could kill someone. Oh yeah. Shank them. Yeah. No matter what, you know, they can. Anything can be used as a weapon, especially in some of these prisons. I read and saw in the documentary. You know, but basically the thing is. Might suggest this now. Keep in mind, you know, I am for the Second Amendment, you know, but the best way to have gun control is to know when and when not to use, to use that gun, you know, only use it as a means of protection. Bottom line, you know, that's gun control right there, folks. Hey, second, second PSA for the knife. Yeah, you, you ever watched that or seen that series on A and E called Sixty Days In? Uh, no, I haven't. It's a, it's about, it's a prison documentary, I take it? It's a jail, it's about this jail, and they put plant, they put fucking regular people, right? And mm -hmm. they sign up who haven't committed no crimes, mm -hmm. and they put them in there, and, and they're, you know, they're in there serving time, just like everybody else would be. For but, 60 days. Yep, and they're in there, and they gotta stay undercover, right? And, yes. And, you know, um... They, but, and they put cameras all over inside of it. They even got motion detector cameras inside of the fucking jail. You know what I mean? Like, it yeah. almost seems like it's fucking fake. Like, but... Kind of like a reality show competition when you think about it. It, it, it. There's times where you're like... Because what would go on is... Fucking like eight guys would beat the living dog shit out of one dude, right? Mm -hmm, yeah. And fucking the guards would never come in. They just fucking let it happen, like, and, and they know. I know motherfucking people are watching, and they would just let them beat the dog shit out of somebody, and fucking the guards would not come in. And they said this is part of the corruption and shit that's going on in there, and that's why they got these people signed up to try to figure it out. I mean, these fucking guys are in there fucking smoking joints and doing crack. And fucking drug deals are going on left and right. And fucking, it's just, it, it's like, it was almost like the fucking producers of A&E said, here you go, here's all the drugs. Fucking, mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're just going to do let you guys do what you want. It, to me, I, to this day, I still don't know if the shit is fake or not. You know what I'm saying? It, I, I don't know. I, I, it's confusing fucking to me, you know? And then like at the end when they get released, like the one the the people that were really in there, like one of them was like, "Yeah, I I know you're a cop or whatever." You know what I mean? At the end, they're telling the one guy that. So it's almost like what? Were the are the fucking people incarcerated in on it too? 
You know, it's like they're all in on it, but I don't know. You know, there's girls and there's guys and, you know, and they got like fake names that they use and they use fake crimes, obviously, you know, and they got to remember their script and what they're in there for. And then sometimes they kind of slip up, you know what I'm saying? They accidentally make mistakes and then they got like a code where they, if they feel like they're fucking threatened, they have like a sign where they're like, move their shoulder around and pretend like their shoulder is so, sh sore. You know what I'm saying? And they'll yes. be looking right at the camera and then they start doing that and the producers and shit know that that's the sign to come in because they don't feel safe. Well, there's times in it where fucking they won't come in. <laughs> so, wow. so then all of a sudden they do stupid shit like a guard will call, call one of the people in on it, right? And then they'll give them a note. And it'll tell them to call this number. Well, and then they get on the phone and they're calling the fucking producer. And they're asking what's mm -hmm. going on. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, people ain't that fucking naive, man. No fucking way, dude. Them people in there doing the time. I, I, to me, I think, they're, I think it was all like just a fucking people getting paid left and right. You know what I'm saying? This, it, was, it just didn't, at times it seemed real. But a, a lot of it was just fucking weird, man. You know? Wow. That is something. It's that's oh, yeah. probably a show that probably that show needs to be um, looked in on, I guess, pretty soon. It's, <laughs> it's, it's fucking interesting, I'll tell you that. It is. But neither of you guys ever heard of that one, huh? No, I, no, I never heard of it. I never really uh, watch television much because of my work schedule, you know, basically. You know, the only way I come home is usually um, sometimes uh, I know, I don't know if, basically the only thing I ever watched recently basically was um, either Live PD or um, or the other, or their offshoots or whether it's, um, there was this one show I remember seeing on the um, former Spike Network called, uh, I think it was called Jail. I've never heard of that one. Oh, it was basically kind of like uh, cops, basically. What it is is basically it shows the process of people. They get bring in the, they go to different jails, whether it's in Texas, Vegas, you know. And basically, oh they yeah, go to yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. I yes. know what you're talking about now. Yeah, see and how it shows the them. Are... It shows them being booked in and shit. Yep, and, uh, all the process shows them being um having issues, you know, you can't go to try to be defined and all that stuff, being resistant and all that, you know. Yeah, I, I remember that. Now, now that you, now that you talk about it, I do. Remember I kind of miss that. I kind of miss that show. That was fun to watch at times, you know. You, you know what else I was gonna say too is fucking, how many seasons is fucking cops at? I don't know I how many. I, I think, think they're over. Think? I think they're over fucking thirty seasons in. Well. You know, well, they've been I can't around really for play. a long time, man. Actually, well, probably that's been a lot more than one of the greatest reality shows ever prior to all the real world and all these other shows that MTV, VH1 never start putting out, you know? Cops cops seem to kind of open the door for the reality shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It kind of was the originator. You, you know yeah. what I mean? Nobody and by the, basically what's even more interesting is cop, uh, Cops is still more interesting to this day than the other reality shows that are out there now. Yeah, like like the live PD, it's okay, but... Which, by the way, it's not really live because you notice it's, um they show this, they aired it, oh, but the, excuse me, the program airs at night time, but yet they're showing clips that was filmed earlier that day. So yeah. it's not really full live. Yeah, yeah, they're they're claiming it's live, but they're they're playing pre-recorded shit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Because, you know, they got cops on the 20, recording 24-7. And now they got these um, offshoot programs called Police Patrol and Body Cam, basically um, showing what goes on for the body cam that the cops wear at times, you know, the dash cam and stuff, you know. But, yeah, we can't help but reason why we those shows are big is because it shows what the real cops go through on a daily, almost on a daily basis, you know. Right. And plus, it's outright fucking interesting. It's so interesting to watch, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I don't fucking even have cable or nothing like that. What I see, I usually yep. get it off of YouTube or whatever, 
You know what right. I mean? We, we have cable. We don't. But I just don't really watch TV that much, you know? Yeah, I, I hear you. I hear you on that. Like, I got to tell you this story. I documented this on my channel. This is about a couple of years back. I was walking when we was living in the other area that we was living in. Uh, we was, I was walking home from a shopping center, you know, basically a shop that was easily that I could easily walk to. I had a couple of snacks in my hand. You know, and I saw this <laughs> big, big, you know, it's like a big a plastic container or something. You know, I was sitting by the, a stop sign by a c intersection. You know, I'll take a look in it. There was all these empty shells, boxes of bullets. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> and so what Crazy. I did is, I know. So what I did is I, um, I was record, I recorded it. I was about, I filmed some of it. So I stopped that. I called the cops, waited until a cop car shows up, you know, and basically I had to wait a long while because it was freezing cold out there. My hands was like almost near frostbite by the time I was waiting because I was an idiot. I forgot, forgot my gloves. Basically, what the, a cop car shows up, you know, I had to give him the details. And then um, he t thanks me for his you know, service, you know, the, um, letting him know about this because it was between this intersection where a elementary school and a shopping center where this was located. So if anybody saw that, you know, the level of concern is going to go way up. Right. Fuck so yeah. basically... So basically, I kind of like uh, did my good deed for that day, you know. Basically, you, you know what I, I was thinking about that when that shit happened to you and that cop was doing that wellness check on you. Yeah, I might have. Oh, dude, that was fucking so funny, man. I know. You know, that some was... people, so many. When TSS two put together that compilation of Joe Cronin moments from this past year, um, somebody wrote in the comment section. I'm surprised, get Doctor Earl getting. Stop by the cops and make the list, you know. It should have, because that was. I know. It was. It was. I mean, I felt bad for you, but I'm just like watching this shit, and I'm like, man, I can't even believe this. Is that that thing that skit we we heard when he's like running away from the cops and he? Well, yeah, Connie. Connie. Yeah, no, yeah Connie Chris. You know, he did that thing. You know, basically, basic on that. Uh, that show I did with Erotic Kitty um, on my channel uh, a couple couple of months back you know yeah. basically he took that he took some snippets of that and made it to a whole skit it was fucking funny <laughs> at, the, at the end you get gunned down yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> like what the fuck man are you are you <laughs> you all you hear is <laughs> fucking rounds get popped off <laughs> i like when uh brown uh disses the cop <laughs> oh gosh <laughs> It's just it should have went for the sensitive to me yelling at Tommy that one time other time saying fuck you with the broomstick. <laughs> <laughs> oh dang. Yeah, yeah, Tommy, he's not a big fan of yours, is he? Nope, no, he has me blocked on the Twitter. Yeah, it, well, we we all know where me and Tommy stand, but yeah, well, you know, like I said, because, hopefully we'll the, have Bill Fitton on Thursday night. And we can yeah. fucking really get some good shit out. All right, definitely. Yeah. You know, come, to think of it, come to think of it, I think I have Thursday off. Well, so you, you, def, know, so you, def, you, yeah. you know what we'll be doing. Yeah, so I'll definitely call <laughs> in on that night as well, because I'm willing to ask some questions myself about, as I mentioned earlier, where he gets this idea that he's above everybody else. Oh, I mean, yeah. I understand. I mean, I understand. You know, arrogance is a trait of autism. But come on, Tommy, don't take it to the. How many levels are going to take it? Yeah, we'll definitely be answering questions in the chat too if we get Bill on. You know, we'll definitely be oh, rolling. I hope it. so. I hope so, Mister Fitton. Definitely come on and explain your sub boy's actions there. You know, because we need to know. Yeah, and we'll definitely have the Skype open and the phone number going, and you know. I'm sure there'll be a lot of there might be a lot of people that want to talk to Toby's dad, huh? Oh yeah. <laughs> you know, be, yeah, and by the way, speaking of uh Tommy's so and so, who is uh the ghost of Tommy's barber that's in uh your Skype chat there, you know? Uh that's that's Bill Fitton. Bill Fitton. oh really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was talking I was texting him earlier on Skype and he's like, Yeah, I'm gonna call in. All right, I cool. said I'm going to call it Thursday night, and I said, all right, dude, you know, 
Uh, I'll, I'll, I'm gonna make sure I talk to him a little bit before that. Oh, try, definitely... try and get shit lined up a little better. You know what I mean? Get the de uh -huh, get, yes. get the details ironed out. Cause he's he's tried calling a few times and fucking he was when we were streaming for six days straight recording all of our shit. There was about yes. three or four different times where he wanted to call in, where he tried calling in, but nobody was in the Legends Lounge. So, no, you know, nobody knew that he was trying to call. Oh, you know wow. what I mean? You know, because we would come in here like every 12 hours and start up a new one, another part. Okay. But we, it's you know, we didn't actually sit here in the Legends Lounge for fucking six days straight. You wow. know what I mean? Let's see. Speaking of speaking of Roddy Kitty, I want to go back to that show there. Um, here's here's a funny thing. After after that skit that Cunny Chris put together, it, Karate Kid me messaged me on Skype, you know, saying uh, she's kind of upset, she's butt hurt over it, you know. <laughs> I said, well, we had an interesting chat when I got home later on. She's like, you know, she's got she was upset. I was telling her, well, call, you should have called in and explained yourself because they were making that out like she was drunk off her ass when she said she wasn't. You know, basically, you know, she had a cold. She was on some medication and stuff. Well, you need to let Chris, Ken, and everybody else know that, you know. But, yeah, she was afraid to call in, you know, because she knew Filthy was going to ream in on her, basically, joker-wise, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because you know how filthy he is. You know, he'll come back with whatever crazy shit he could think of, you know? Fuck yeah, yeah fucking gamer. He'll go there, man, you know? Yeah, because he will tear your ass apart, you know? Remember, you know, we were talking about that. What was that, what was that thing you mentioned about um, traded insults? Put filthy in there, he'd be a grant 20-time champion. <laughs> yeah, he's going to be uh, on the road soon. Yep. I'm looking forward to that too. So it was going to roast filthy. Yeah. Basically. Oh boy. Yeah, I I think that's going to be fucking hilarious. Oh man. <laughs> oh shit. They're already going to have to come up with some real the uh, real monster shit, you know, to outwit his shit, you know, basically. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Gamer, gamer's a fucking witty motherfucker, man. Yeah, he is. Anyways, back to Roddy Kitty. She's I'm. Just, she admitted that she was afraid to call in, you know, because, you know, basically what I said about Filthy, Filthy going on her. And basically, when you think about it, you know, she's always butt hurt over something. Yep. She's like, I, you know, basically. I thought, I thought you two were pretty cool. Well, we are pretty cool, but the thing is, you know, the problem is, I issue, my issue with her is that I tell her many times, you know, to fight back against YR, fight back against Scott, you know. Yeah. But. All she does is, you know, basically give me a sob story after one another. You know, uh, understand my daughter's going through this. My uh, husband is sick. You know, I'm feeling sick. I had to end up in the hospital. It's like, like Jesus Christ. The other time when we were on the Skype call watching Monetize This, she's like, you know, oh, really, Billy Ricky? Did you have to say that? You know, and even Scott McKinnon called it on the, that one uh, the Sunday night show on Mars' channel. She's said someone, uh, someone in the chat said something about, you know, J involving Jake DeMarco and uh, Joe's wife, Leah. And uh, Kitty was like, that's tasteless and unrespectful. And Scott weighed in on the China and said, Kitty, Roddy Kitty, you need to get a grip on reality, you know. If, why are you watching our show when you can't handle the heat, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Based, and I, think, I cannot tell you how many times me, Bailey Smoke Rudolph, his gal pal Samantha, uh, Alex Payne, and everybody else kept to encourage her to fight back, fight back. It's like she's ultra sensitive. Even now, you can ask. It can ask Alex Payne. He even said, you know, because on Ken's program, I mentioned him, me, Scott, Ken, and whoever, you know, confronting Roddy Kidier like an intervention, trying to tell her to at least man up, you know. And Alex is like, why bother? Good luck on that. <laughs> <laughs> right. She's, and the thing is, I think she's one of those, instead of calling her erotic kitty, you know, we should probably call her erotic snowflake. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because there's a different snowflake. There's not one same 
style snowflake? You know, you know the people who are ultra sensitive. They're called snowflakes. You know yeah. that. Oh, I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah. She fits that description well. I, yeah. Basically, we're trying our best. You know, to man her up. You know, to take a little joke now and then. You know, basically, a reason I'm able to handle a joke. It's because, you know, basically, you know, because of the area that I grew up in. Basically, I'm from I'm a Michigan native, you know. We had throw show, we throw shit like to each other all the time, you know. Right. Yeah, that, that's part of the fucking YouTube is throwing the shit back and forth. Yeah, it's basically, that's, it's fun. It's, as long as it's done in a good way. Right. You know, in a humorous way. If you're going after each other in real, in real dis, um, disrespectful and brutal taste, and it's, then it, when the, that's, that's when it's not fun, basically, you know. Yeah, yeah. That's when it becomes drama, you know. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that shit definitely gets out of control at times. Yeah. You know, but that's that's part of how the fuck this community is, man, or whatever you yeah. want to call I, I sometimes refer to it as an insane asylum, but that, 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 that I don't know. You know, that's <laughs> what it reminds me of sometimes. I'm sorry, but like, you, you, you know, you, there's there's some crazy fucking characters in this fucking world on our that fucking have came into the community, man. I know. You know yeah. what I mean? I, you know, all that. You know, but I'll tell you, one guy I really liked a lot. Fucking was uh, Larry Funk. Oh yeah, yeah. He can't. Yeah, we need to see more of him now and then. You yeah, know? man. He he was funny, dude. Like when I started watching monetize this, that's when Larry Funk was on. Yeah, so and remember he came. Remember he came back on that one episode where me and Tommy were duking it out. Yeah, yeah, I know. And everyone, he, everyone was shocked. That we we're like, holy shit, Larry Funk is back. We miss you, man, dude. Fuck yeah, man. Like I said. Uh, that that was that was like I feel like that's when monetize this was in its prime, man. Yep. Mm -hmm. they, I I think that it's got it's gone down a lot. Uh, you know, it, it's not what it was. I don't think. It, and I, I don't I don't think it'll ever be the way it ever was. Mm -hmm. It'll 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 never get back to its heyday. You know. Well. So I don't think that I'm really missing that much. Yeah. To be honest. Speak of Speaking of which, you know, uh, going back to that the um, episode where I was last on, you know, where uh, Joe Cronin and Dave Rose had that huge blowout over um, discrimination of white people, you know, uh, Dave, do you believe that? Do you believe that Joe Cronin is a discriminative towards whites? Possibly. Because I know Dave Rose uh, announced it on uh, Mars's channel that he would like to challenge Joe. On the, the debate on that particular issue, I think he's whatever makes him more money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, he Cronin's a fucking flip flopper, man. No. He, you know, he one week likes somebody, one week he don't. One, it's he, he's he'll do anything for the money. I agree with you on that, Silver Roll. I do agree. Well, I mean, it is his livelihood, but, you yeah. know, that's... Yeah, yeah, but then again, you got to have something other than your livelihood um, as well. You got to have your philosophies as well. You got to have your thinking pattern, you know. And there's something I need to touch up on, you know, the, this, um, you know, this discriminative towards white people issue. I think that was another thing that was brought on upon people during the 1990s. Hmm. Because when you think about it, you know, like it was all about other people's races, other people's ethnic backgrounds and stuff, you know. And for many years, many there were many people that were, we all re always read about how the white man took the took America, the this new land from the um, Native Americans, you know. Basically, the first lyrics of um, "Run to the Hills" pretty sums it up, you know. White man came across. The sea, they brought us pain and misery. They took our will, they took our game for their own need. You know, basically, yeah. we hear stuff, we hear stories like that. You know, and soldiers blue in the barren ways, hunting and killing the game. Mm -hmm, yeah, excellent show. I saw, by the way, been back in September. I never saw that. Yeah, and huh. plus, you also got to remember, um, 
all the stories, you know, the white people and the slavery issue prior to the Civil War, you know. Yeah. Some people, uh, there are some blacks out there who hold a grudge against white people for that, you know. You yeah. always, you know, remember, remember Al Malcolm X talking about the whites being the blue-eyed devil, you know, basically, you know, keeping the black man down, you know. Uh, Louis Farrakhan coming on the mic and saying it was the white man that killed Malcolm X when we know it probably wasn't true. It was the government. Be yeah, or uh, one of the Nation of Islam members themselves. Because back then when you gave to basically for what I had heard, when you turn your back on Islam and when you leave it, you're marked for death. Yeah. Even um, um, even Farrakhan even admitted it on a Prado show that he one time even said it, Malcolm X was only worthy of death when he left the Nation of Islam, you know? And mm. how do we know, and when you think about this, how do we know it wasn't him that pulled the trigger that killed Malcolm? Well, on the movie Malcolm X, they show a couple black guys come in and shoot him. Yeah, exactly. And we all saw that scene, basically. And so somebody, basically, you know, Malcolm, Mr. Uh, Louis Farrakhan is wrong for that. You know, he just wants to set blame on the white man for this reason, for this issue, for this going on. You know, basically, here's something else I need to clarify that I thought was stupid. Um, Black Lives Matter. You remember the Philadelphia riots after their their home team won the Super Bowl? Yeah. And they rioted all over the place, you know? Yep. Yeah, oh, gosh. Yeah, they, they the Black fucked up their, t their city, man. Yeah, basically, you know... Well, Black Lives Matter stuff in Minnesota here was pretty big. They stopped, like, all the major highways in Minneapolis. Yeah, I, re yeah. I remember that. I remember yeah. that. I was going to go fucking try to stream that shit. Wow. There, there was, what was it? They, uh, Anonymous mm -hmm. or whatever was fucking having a gathering mm -hmm. down at the St. Paul Capitol or whatever. Yeah. Fucking, I went down there. To fucking stream it and fucking nobody was there. I was fucking wow. pissed, man. Oh, nobody man. fucking showed up at the state capitol, dude. It was wow. on a Saturday morning. I get up, fucking. I got. I get down there at nine o'clock. I had somebody with me for backup, you know, to kind of be my eyes. Mm -hmm. I got fucking a bunch of battery packs. I got my shit. I'm ready to stream. I got my stick. I got I got everything I need. I got fucking food and, <laughs> and pop nobody and shit. shows up. I, I brought a lunch, dude. I was planning on being there till the sun went down. Oh yeah, I ha I even had a light with me that could run off my battery pack. Fucking, I had everything I needed. And I I could stream for, for like eighteen hours, fucking straight. You know what I mean? Nonstop. Yes. And I I brought everything. I was ready to rock and roll. Fucking nobody showed. Oh, I was like man. motherfuckers, man. Dude, I was you so were Ill mad. I was were so out, I was so fucking pissed and disappointed. I mean, I, I was looking so forward to that, and then nobody fucking showed up. I was like, you motherfuckers, man. You wow. know, nobody fucking showed up. That's crazy. It was oh. bullshit. I was. Oh man. I, yeah, you know, I, I was gung-ho for that. I was all pumped, you know, the night before. I was like, this is going to be fucking great, you know? Fucking probably some tear gas might get fired at me, but I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I'm ready. You know, I, I, think, I think I had a rag and shit to put around my face if I needed it. Fucking only thing I didn't have was milk. I, should, I wish, you know, because if you get tear gassed or whatever, fucking milk will help you put that in your eyes. You know oh, what I boy. mean? But yeah, got, I, I, I was ready to rock and roll, man. <laughs> <laughs> kind of funny, you know what? This reminds me of this incident I spoke about it on one of the, on my videos. Uh, the Ku Klux Klan came to Ann Arbor, Michigan. I think it was in uh, '95 or '96, if I remember. And basically, the whole city of Ann Arbor went completely berserk. There, there was some. Um, the National Guard had to be called in. I guess a couple SWAT teams. A lot of crazy shit went down, you know. Because basically Ann Arbor is a pretty much liberal city, you know. Yeah. But but yet they were throwing tear gas. They were throwing things and such, you know. Made the national news and that, you know. A friend of mine went down there. He got you know, pictures of the whole thing. He was showing us us that uh, when we met, got together, you know. And 
Well, a couple of days later, the Ku Klux Klan decided to go to another area in Michigan to hold a rally, and nobody showed up. Wow. That's sure, because crazy. Of the, just because of the news that made in Ann Arbor. You know, because people watch that, they play like, what a bunch of idiots the Ann Arbor people are, basically. Uh, the Westboro Baptist Church, you heard about them? Uh, no, no, I haven't. No. There's the, well, that church uh, that, that's always protesting, you know, everything in sight, whether it's a soldier's funeral, there was pro- protesting um, this funeral, you know, protesting our honored veterans if they die, you know. They were protesting everything for that. Their uh, pastor, uh, one of their leaders of the recently died, you know. They were going to come into uh, the Houston area, and uh, one of my friends was going to go down there to protest them, but she decided not against it because why give these fools attention that they seek? Right. Yeah. yeah. So basically, so basically, that's what this uh, town uh, in Michigan basically did. They heard what happened in. And now in Arbor, I say, like, nope, we're not going to go down that route. We're just going to ignore them and walk away, you know. Mm. Mm. So wow. basically, that's the best way to do it, you know. Basically, you know, all these other people are saying, how dare you get involved with the Ku Klux Klan? How dare these, these people? We should kill the Ku Klux Klan. Yeah, well, basically, we remind those people about something. In the First Amendment, you, are, you have the right to peacefully organize whichever group you can. Whether it's the AE, where it's the uh, UAWs or the Boy Scouts, because if you get rid of the KKK, you have to get rid of those other groups as well. Yeah, yeah, that's true, true, so, true. Yeah, <laughs> they have the right to form their own group, even though we don't reside with their ideas. But we also have the right to not buy into their ideas, to ignore their dumb asses. You know, exactly. We have the right to ignore them. You know, yep. that's basically the better way to do it, right there. Yeah, you know, a lot of that shit, I think, has government influence in it, too. Yeah. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? It, it, it's fucking weird, weird shit, man. Mm-hmm. It's, it, like I say, it's it's a weird state of fucking the way the world is, man. I know. Everything's gone, you know, basically, uh, I mentioned a couple times about the Attitude Era entering the, moving to the White House, but I think it's not just moved to the White House, it's moved into the, um, modern mainstream realm that we're in right now Mm -hmm. yeah because it's like you never know who's going to trust who you know you never know who's your friend you never know who's going to have your back in which you know right and you never never know what agenda this person's going to have in the long run you know yeah yeah fuck yeah man I mean you know that's another thing I was going to bring up you think uh, you think there's any chance in hell Trump will really actually get impeached out of the White House? I pretty much doubt it, you know, because it has to. It's only only the House is only uh, voted voted for it, you know. But it has to go through the Senate as well. And from what I understand, the Senate is mostly Republican, you know. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, you also got to consider, you know, Bill Clinton was able to finish out. The rest of his second term when he got impeached, you know, yeah. and uh, and the odds was favored to him I because thought, you know, you know but, what though, I swear that Bill Clinton left three days early. I'm not too. I'm not I, I swore, about that. I swore he left three days fucking early, but I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong, but I thought that he did. I know. Hmm. Yeah. That's uh, kind of. I don't recall hearing about this until now. Yeah, I swear I read something about it that he left three days before his term was over. <laughs> Oh wow! Well. I have to look in, have to look into that pretty soon, I guess. You know. Yeah, I mean, but I'm they, not I'm not a hundred percent on that, but I'm pretty sure what I, I remember reading that he did he did leave the White House three days before he was his term was up. Oh wow! Well. So, you know, I'm not like mm-hmm. I say, I mean, I'm not a hundred percent on that, but I'm pretty sure that's what happened. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, something that'll be, that'll be something new for the uh, thus- conspiracy theorists to talk about, I guess, you know? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so uh, I think we'll probably see uh, Trump going for re-election this coming year. 
Yeah, I, I think I think in the long run, all they did is help them. Yep, you know exactly. That, that's what me and my brother-in-law were talking about. That's what Ken was talking about as yeah. well last Saturday night. Yeah. You know, basically, they're giving these... Um, the Democrats are basically giving, slowly by slowly, giving Trump more leverage over them. Yeah. Fuck yeah. And, they, and, and the thing is, they're not, they don't realize it. They're so prone, they're so focused on overthrowing Trump. We got to get rid of Trump because basically Trump spoke out against things that, that they are for, you know, you know, like immigration. They have the idea of basically let's, we should open all the borders to let all these people in. You know, we have an opportunity. We got tons of money. Well, not necessarily. Right. You got to you got to remember that you know, they have so much money for this uh, pro, for food stamps and other programs and stuff. You know. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know. okay. Yeah. So basically, but they are not. But they can't get it through their heads. You know, they don't want to listen. They don't want to listen to reason. You know, Pelosi, the ugly broad that oh she is. You know, she's she got, a witch. Oh God! Somebody shoot her, please. <laughs> I agree with that one, bro. I ain't, somebody, gonna, I ain't gonna do it. But... On the, somebody burn her at the stake. <laughs> oh. Burn that evil witch to the ground. Never liked her. <laughs> the fact that she said Obamacare was a, was beautiful was oh, atrocious enough. What a fucking joke. Yeah, because it was going to bring in money for your cohorts, you idiot. Of course. I'm, no, but I'm here's, a, the, here's the thing that really uh, this is the thing that really pisses me off. Well. That about some of these people who said Obama was a good president. Uh, he wasn't really that good of a president when you think about it. With, with all, no. there was less jobs, there was less hiring, there was less you know work available. You know, many people were on were unemployed. Many people were relying on government you know benefits, whether it's unemployment payments or uh, food stamps and stuff to get by. You know, getting their kids. Basically, when when, when you think about it. They were looking to up to him and his administration, like like people of a t of a certain uh, kingdom, look up to their king for help. Right. Yeah. When you think about it, you know that's basically what it was, you know. And this really, and here's the thing: they talk about Obama this being uh, this uh, great president and that, but here's the thing, you know. He wasn't that good of a president. I mean, basically, he was a Muslim. His real name was allegedly a Barry Satoro. Yeah. You know, he got into Islam, you know, basically he, probably gay, left a religion. Gay, too. Gay. Yep. Well, gay. Uh, and his wife, a guy. <laughs> well, yeah, I remember seeing this video on Ellen oh, and her and dancing I, around, I, but, and you could see the schlong shaking. Yeah, oh, gosh. <laughs> Did you ever see that video? No, I don't, no, I think I have. You know, what's it in at some uh, gathering in some uh, town where there she's dancing that they got a. No, she was on the Ellen DeGeneres show, and you could fuck it. She's wearing like these white white dress, dude. She had a bigger bulge than I got. Yeah, dude, it was sick. It was oh sick as gosh. fuck, dude. dude yeah, it looked oh like my. she got. You know, that's what they say that Obama liked to take it in the ass. You know what I'm saying? Oh so, god. And then you know. The kids are like actors that they have. They're just basically staged actors. They're like oh, adopted gosh. actors. Oh, you know? oh gosh. <laughs> gosh, you know what? I remember there was this one photo I saw on Facebook of him and Biden running around the um, White House uh, holding gay pride flags. <laughs> what the fuck? That's what I said. Yeah, I like it. Uh -huh. Oh, gosh, give me a break, you know. Well, I'm basically, I'm glad, one of the reasons why I'm glad Trump is because uh, we're all working again. Thank goodness. Every, but lots of people are working again. I, I wonder how, I, I should probably ask someone that if they are from, if I ever go on another program and somebody from the D-Town Detroit calls in, whether it's Broken Lion or uh, somebody, or Ricky Bobby from the D, you know, I should probably ask him how the city of Detroit is, you know. Has it improved? Has it been better? Because when I left, um, the chances for finding work was shell, was shell shot gone, you know, basically, you know. Yeah. Didn't, uh, didn't like 750,000 fucking people leave? I, from the state of Michigan? Yeah. Yeah, I do not know. I'm just about this was right a while now. back. 
this was a few years back, and like over three quarters of a million fucking people just left. Wow, that is a trip. Yeah, and I was and I was one of those people when yep. you think about it. I yep. left here. I left there in uh, 2014. I think that's around when it was happening too. Yeah, but was, yeah, people were fed up with it. There was no work anywhere, whether it's Roseville, uh, Richmond, or um, Detroit, Grand Rapids, or Allen Park, E Course. There was no work anywhere. Remember, I I was looking for work at all those damn areas. Oh, I kept. Oh, I had one job interview in the two plus. In the two years I spent living off of unemployment. Wow. Was there like, yeah. there wasn't even work at like temp services? Yeah, actually there was work at temp service. There was a thank goodness for this place. I got to plug this place, you know, Minutemen Staffing on Dearborn, in Dearborn, Michigan Avenue. That place helped me out. I got involved with those um, guys, you know, back around the, uh, about seven months prior to leaving here. Uh, it was in 2013. Somebody told me about them, and I went there and checked them out. They got me to work right away. And the next day, put me to work to this place, put me to work that place, including you know, waste management, you know, a place called Call Check, and um, which basically makes um, solvent for your windshield wiper fluid, basically for your cars. You know, mm. a, place, a place called Magna Check, which we do a lot of uh, inspecting. You know. Um, for part auto parts and stuff like that, you know, love that place, you know, that place, Minutemen staffing, that place helped me a lot, you know, basically. Yeah. So I gotta plug them. Shout out to you guys out there, you know, Dan and Colleen up there. Thank you so much for the help, you know. Yeah, I had I had a place I worked at through this tent place, and I knew the owner pretty good, man, to the point where the owner would bring me to jobs and shit. It was crazy. Uh, you know, yeah. I, I, like, always was on the top of the list. The, you know, he'd do this kind of shit for me, too. He helped me out a lot where he'd be like, you know, there ain't no work, but, you know, you could sweep and mop and clean up the bathrooms and stuff around here, and I'll cut you a check for 20 bucks. It'll take you an hour. I'm like, all right. You know what right. I mean? I'd just hang around. Usually it would be something. He, he'd do anything he could do for me, you know? That's like good. Like I said, how many, how many owners of a fucking temp service are fucking bringing you to his job site mm -hmm. you know he, that that That's don't true. really happen that often you know yeah you know? and, and it was like and he would he, i would be on the list and sometimes i wouldn't be like the next one to go out on a job and he would he would bump me up and he would he would put me in the group you know what i mean wow. i have i had like seniority but it was weird because like i guess i was a good worker in his eyes you, know uh, you I mean? were, yes. I mean, uh, he was something that he liked about me. I, I was kind of blown away by the whole thing, just the fact that the owner of the place would actually bring me to the job site and be like, "Here, you know, you don't got no money," and he would kick me some cash, and I'd sometimes have to take a bus home or whatever, and I'd get back, and you know, it, it was it was interesting. I'll tell you that, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, I mean, we probably all been there working at a tent place at least maybe once or twice in our lives, you know. Okay. Mm hmm. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Well, you know uh, what, Brown? I think we're gonna get out of here, man. We're gonna bounce okay. on out, dude. Yeah, it's so am I. I got to get ready for work tomorrow. Basically, yeah, it, I, it, I start. I start. I start nine in the morning. Thing. So I should probably get my ass to bed here. Hey, I I gotta thank you guys for coming on my show tonight. I'm I'm really glad you did. You know. Yeah, no problem, no problem, buddy. Right. Yeah, so definitely. I'll, I have Thursday off. I'll definitely call in when you have uh, Tommy's dad come in. Yeah, thir Thursday night we're supposed to have Tommy's dad on Bill Fenton, ladies okay, and gentlemen. So, yeah, so, we gotta plug that show this Thursday on Minnesota Vikings fans channel. Go on. Uh, Check his channel out, watch his content, and sub to us. subscribe to his channel as well. Real as fuck TV, baby. Be... Real as fuck TV, baby. Yep, that's Episode 67. And, and an yeah. I want to make one other announcement, too, since we're yeah. real quick. Yes. Because like I said, on the 9th of January will be the one-year anniversary show of Real as fuck TV. So we're gonna probably we're gonna try to get some shit together for that. We don't know yet what we're gonna do exactly, but we're working on that. Trying to pull something big off, you know, do a long stream. Try to get some people on and shit. 
you know, because a lot of people didn't think fucking we could make it this long, you know, mm -hmm. and we're proving them and to be wrong. Pro and you proved them wrong. Yeah, and I think that's a pretty proud moment in real as fuck TV history that we're fucking yeah. have made it to a year, you know? That's good. What do you yeah, think, exactly. Silver Oak? Yeah, I think it's fucking, yeah. you know. It's, it's yeah, a, definitely. And then the one definitely. other thing, when we do episode 100, ladies and gentlemen, around in May is going to be the 24-hour stream of real oh, as boy. fuck TV. So get ready, ladies and gentlemen. Oh. Episode 100 is going to be a motherfucker. It's going to wow. be a fucking banger. So get ready. Wow. All day and night, all day and night, we're going to be going, man. I'm going to stay awake for that whole motherfucking thing. Bring uh, lots of coffee with you, man. I, I, I hope Silver Roll can fucking make it, but, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah he... I have a feeling Silver Roll is going to need a nap in the middle. Oh, I might <laughs> drag a fucking bed in here. So if you guys go to go, well, say, say if you guys go to the party store or the groceries, do some grocery shop, you going to take the phones with you and uh, take the computer with you? Oh, no. We'll have everything set up where we won't have to go anywhere. The, uh, I see, yeah. The, the, ver the thing that I may do, I might end up hanging out in the garage for a while, but I'll still be connected into the show. You know what uh, I mean? Cool. Through my Skype. So I, we, we got that part all figured out. But as far as it goes, you know, we're, we, we, nah, we ain't going to be fucking taking off and going to no grocery store in, <laughs> in the middle of the stream. We're going to plan ahead, Dr. Brown. You know? Okay. We're going we're gonna to plan ahead. We're going to be ready. We'll have fucking food, you know? Yeah, we might be eating on the stream. You got to expect that if you're going to yes. go 24 hours. You got to have, have go nutrition. Well, or the bathroom, you know. You can, oh, but no, you, no, no. Someone's going to have to take over a while. One of you guys take a dump, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> what are you trying to say? We're full of say, shit? We're real as fuck, motherfucker. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. <laughs> you could do what JB does and uh, to a couple, a couple times record him take a dump. Oh, <laughs> oh, fuck, man. Oh. <laughs> all right, all right, Doctor Brown. Thank you, dude. Okay. Thank Love you, brother. Very much, guys. This was yep. fucking enjoyable, dude. You have it a nice was, night, dude. man. This okay, was, then. this was cool as fuck, man. Very fucking anytime, Brown. You know, like okay, I said, yeah. we appreciate okay. you being a supporter of Real as Fuck TV, man. Yeah, I appreciate being a supporter of me as well. I appreciate that, man. Fuck yeah, dude. All, all right. right, you have a nice night, bro. All right, you too, guys. All right. right. Once gonna... again, Real Fuck TV on the Minnesota Vikings fan, a.k.a. Oh, what is it? Um, Raft. Real Raft TV. Okay. Yeah. All right. Subscribe to that channel as well. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel, Dr. Earl W. Brown on YouTube. You guys, ha so... everyone have a good one, okay? Yeah, you too. All right. Bye-bye.